Okay, so today is day eight of my 42 days of keto chow only, and it's day one of using grapeseed oil, which is a polyunsaturated fatty acid. Well, it's very high in polyunsaturated fatty acids um, for my calorie source in the keto chow. Here it is. This is, I think, strawberry. It doesn't look quite the same as when you use heavy cream. Um, it looks more, I don't know, translucent. More like, I don't know, it looks more like like strawberry pudding that's a little bit translucent, or a little bit watered down. Um, I actually haven't even tasted it yet. Um, this morning I went in for my first uh, blood test of the um, experiment, but I'll get to that in a second. First off, let's talk about polyunsaturated fatty acids. Um, so just to start off with, in case you missed the, uh, the point of this experiment, when I did my four-week experiment back in November of 2017, I got some really interesting, interesting results in my triglycerides the week that I was doing avocado oil. And I did avocado oil because I was stuck in San Francisco, the only available um, lodging. I could either go for a $1,000 a night hotels or I could go for $50 a night um, hostels. So I went with the hostel, which didn't have refrigeration, so I was I had to use avocado oil, which sounded like a good idea. It turned out to be a great idea. Um, anyway, when I got back and I got my blood test, my triglycerides had almost doubled, but everything else looked great. And so I, I talked to Dave Feldman about it. He didn't know whether it was a, um, a result of the, or what was the result. What was the cause? Um, he had a theory that it might have been the result of um, I switched from heavy cream, which has a lot of saturated fat with a little bit of mono and a tiny, tiny bit of polyunsaturated, to using avocado oil, which is really high in monounsaturated, but had more polyunsaturated oil than I or fatty acids than I was used to, and so he thought that that might have something to do with the change. So I. I tried an experiment where I did half avocado, half heavy cream to see if that would give me an in-between. Really wasn't conclusive like I wanted, so I devised this new test to figure out what was the cause of it. And to isolate out uh, polyunsaturated versus monounsaturated versus um, saturated fatty acids. Because using keto chow, I can do that. I can definitively, I can maintain the calories exactly the same, maintain the nutrition exactly the same, other than uh, heavy cream has uh, some extra vitamin E, vitamin A, and vitamin D, but that's okay. Uh, I'll get into that later when I do the, uh, um, the week of coconut oil. So, well, and for that matter, uh, grapeseed oil that I'm using now claims to be high in vitamin E. Still, I'm controlling almost all of the variables. Uh, very, very few things are changing from week to week, so it's a good test. Anyway, so I'm doing polyunsaturated fatty acid this week um, just by changing the source of the calories. Um, and just to, I, I, depending on how much you know about the difference between poly, mono, and saturated fatty acids, this might be a bit of a, a rehash. I've The post that goes along with this video, I've put a lot of information in it, but the the short version of it is, as short as I can make this, you you have a, a fatty acid is a, it's a chain of carbon and hydrogen. There's some stuff at the beginning, um, it's a hydroxy, I think, ion, uh, you've got a carbon hooked to an oxygen with a double bond, and then an oxygen and then a hydrogen, and then you have chains of carbon, 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 just going off with hydrogen on each side of it. And so the carbons have a single bond, and then there's a hydrogen on either side of it. Um, well, then you have uh, what are called, mo well, then if you have all of the hydrogen spots filled, and each carbon atom is a single bond, that is a saturated fatty acid, because it's saturated. There are no empty holes. It's full. Well, then you have a monounsaturated fatty acid. And in a monounsaturated, one of the bonds between carbon atoms has a double bond. So instead of a single bond, there's a double bond. 
Well, that, that double bond isn't as stable as the saturated single bond because you know the two carbons are stuck together. Well, they want to react with stuff. And the thing that they want to react with a lot is oxygen. So oxygen comes along and they say, oh, oxygen, and they hook up to oxygen atoms. Well, that's oxidation and it introduces, well, depending on who you're listening to, it introduces what are called free radicals or um, a reactive oxygen species. Uh, Dr. Benjamin Bickman likes to talk about those a lot. Um, and those cause problems in our, in our body. Uh, they cause uh, the infl the they cause your arteries to be inflamed. They cause inflammation throughout the rest of the body. They're it's just no good. You don't want those in your body. And monounsaturated have one spot where that can happen. So unlike saturated, which I, I bet your great grandma had a bucket of lard or bacon grease or whatever that just sat on the table and they didn't have. Um, refrigeration back then and, and it didn't ever go bad or at least it took a long time a lot longer than it took to use up and so it would just hang out it wouldn't ever uh, go rancid and rancid is oil that has combined with oxygen it's oxidized well um, olive oil is a mostly a mono unsaturated fatty acid and whenever you get an oil there's always a mix um, Coconut oil by itself is almost entirely saturated, but there's a little bit of monounsaturated and a little bit of other stuff. Um, you can generally tell if something is primarily saturated by whether it's solid at room temperature or solid in the refrigerator, if you happen to live in, uh, uh, I don't know, Fiji or something like that. Um, because the saturated ones tend to lie flat in a nice straight line, and so they get a little cold and they just turn into a solid. Whereas monounsaturated and polyunsaturated, they are kinked because of that double bond. Um, and so they tend to stay liquid at room temperature. Now, you, you have a, a shorter or a medium chain fatty acid, um, which you get in MCTs, and those stay liquid because they're just so small, they don't really stack up and become a solid. So MCT oil, you can stick it in the fridge and it generally won't solidify. Um, anyway. Where was I at? So that was, well, I talked about monounsaturated. Polyunsaturated have the double bond. They like to oxidize. Um, oh yeah, that's what I was talking about. I was talking about oil going rancid. Um, olive oil and other mostly monounsaturated, they don't go rancid very quickly. They can go rancid if you leave them out long enough. And if you uh, use them to cook, the heat will cause oxidation and it will tend to go rancid quicker. Um, mono, uh, polyunsaturated fatty, fatty acids go rancid like crazy. Um, they just, they love to oxidize. They've got two, uh, at least two, um, double bonds and those just, they react with just about everything. Um, in fact, they'll even react with light. And the funny thing is, so Polyunsaturated fatty acids have a, a funny effect of they will lower your overall cholesterol and specifically your low density lipoproteins. Um, there are a lot of theories about why that happens. I'll let Dave Feldman explain it better than I could ever even try. But um, because it lowers cholesterol and because the American Heart Association and the Diet Heart Hypothesis and the American Diabetes Association and the U.S. Department of Agriculture and everybody else thinks that cholesterol is the end-all, be-all of everything. And it's the only thing that's important as far as um, telling you whether you're going to have a heart attack. Lowering your cholesterol is the most important thing possible. If you lower your cholesterol, you will st stop you from having heart attacks. Which is analogous to saying that firing firefighters will stop fires. Because every time there's a fire, firefighters are around. And those guys must be causing fires because they're around. Anyway, <laughs> uh, there's a lot of really good analogies about cholesterol not uh, being the effect and not the cause. And we're focused too much on cholesterol instead of what's causing cholesterol to be there. It's like focusing too much on firefighters being at a fire instead of why is there a fire. Anyway, so because... Um, Polyunsaturated fatty acids, PUFAs, lower your cholesterol. 
those are considered heart healthy oils. You've got things like um, soybean oil, which if you put soybean oil in something, you can claim on the label will, according to such and such study, will lower your chance of heart disease. And so you can put heart healthy on it, um, regardless of the fact that those double bonds and the oxygen, the, the oxi oxidation that occurs causes inflammation, which is what drives heart disease. So you're taking something that helps heart disease and it causes heart disease, but it's lowering your cholesterol. So that's all that matters. Anyway, um, I'm, that's my soapbox. But um, yeah, so because, yeah, you've got the, uh, they, they lower your cholesterol. They're considered heart healthy. Anyway, so I'm, I'll be consuming a whole lot of heart healthy oil and I completely expect my, uh, my biomarkers of inflammation to go up this week. I expect my triglycerides, well, it'll be interesting to see if my triglycerides go up or go down. My LDL cholesterol should go down. Um, my particle size will probably go down as well. Um, I suspect my high density lipoproteins will go down as well. And, and just to clarify, I, I'm falling into the same trap as everyone else does, is that I'm uh, talking about HDL and LDL as cholesterol, when actually what they are is they are lipoproteins. They're a boat that carries stuff. One of those just happens to be cholesterol, but they also carry triglycerides and a bunch of other stuff because your blood is full of water. And fats and oils and water don't mix. They, they just don't mix. The, uh, the whole thing about if you eat a lot of bacon with its artery-clogging fat, that it'll actually clog your arteries is a fallacy because fat can't go around in your bloodstream by itself. It's simply impossible. It's a fundamental law of nature. Um, in order for fats to go around in your bloodstream, you have to have them inside of something. It can be a chylomicron. It can be, uh, uh, sorry, I'm trying to think while I'm talking. It can be a, uh, <laughs> lipoprotein. There we go. It can be a lipoprotein. It can be a, a variety of different things, but it doesn't just go around and clog your arteries. So that's my soapbox. I'll probably get more onto that later. Um, if you want to know more about fatty acids, about the whole thing with trans fats, which trans fats are you take a polyunsaturated and you use a chemical process to shove hydrogen onto there. So you get hydrogenated oils. Um, that's a trans fat. Everybody now agrees that they're bad for you. Um, but Nina Teichels did an amazing book called uh, The Big Fat Surprise, Why Butter, Meat, and Cheese Belong in a Healthy Diet. And fantastic stuff. Um, that book alone is probably responsible for my absolute there is no way I'm ever going to stop doing keto because of the science and the, 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 the information in that book. It just lays it out in a very simple and a very direct and a very easy to understand manner that it's like, yeah, I, <laughs> why would I go back to eating this way when it so clearly is um, I, I want to stay doing keto, um, eating saturated fat as much as I can and then avoiding polyunsaturated fatty acids as as much as possible and especially trans fatty acids um anyway so check out her book she even gives a really really good history of uh, the so-called mediterranean diet which i'm not even sure anybody still agrees what that means even the people who came up with it uh, there's a lot of back and forth um Anyway, yeah, I, I, I did, today was, I went and got my first blood test for uh, my experiments, blood test zero, if you were. Um, it was kind of funny, uh, the Draper uh, LabCorp uh, location that I go to, it allows you to set up appointments on the line. I, I as far as I was concerned, it had always been that way, because ever since I started doing these tests, they've allowed you to do um, appointments, but it used to just be a walk-in clinic. Um, 
and but they they will take people who have an appointment before people who were there first because they have an appointment and so we had three of us um, that are doing different parts of different tests uh, with keto chow only um, my wife and uh, one of the other employees are doing they're basically redoing a three-week version of the four-week experiment that I did uh, where they're doing just avocado oil actually this week they're doing just avocado oil last week they were doing just heavy cream and then the week after this they'll be doing avocado plus heavy cream to see if there's a middle ground um, anyway so all three of us were going and one, one had a 9 o'clock appointment and then a 9.15 and I had a 9.30 so we all just carpooled together and went to the thing um, we got there just before 9 o'clock they took the nine o'clock appointment and then the 9 15 and then me they took I, I think i went in at like 908 and there were people who were really mad that we were going in before them because we had appointments and it was kind of funny the uh, the phlebotomist lady is like if you would like to complain and i suggest that you do um there is a card with the phone number of the corporate offices please give them a call and tell them what you think <laughs> and people are like yeah we're gonna do it she's like go ahead i'd love to. And people were like, oh, we want to know her name so we can complain about her. And it's like, yeah, it's not her, guys. It's the corporate offices that won't hire additional people. Anyway, <laughs> so there was, it was, it was close to a riot going on. It was actually pretty, it was funny in that it, it was such a sad situation. Um, I didn't feel good to be going in before the other people, but it was I, kind of an ironic, funny thing that, it wasn't the fault of the employees. Um, it was just th that's how their corporate overlords were running things. So, anyway, that's today's update. And I guess I might as well taste this. I always lick off the top so that when I touch it to my nose, I don't get keto chow all over my nose. So it's not bad. I mean, it tastes like strawberry keto chow. It doesn't have the same creaminess. Um, and the, the grapeseed oil that I'm using, I, I guess I picked well. Um, it's very high in polyunsaturated fatty acids, but it has hardly any flavor. That I, it has no smell, and it has essentially no flavor. Um, so 21 meals of this shouldn't be a problem at all. Oh, and I'm, I've been fasting all day so because of my blood test. So, yeah. Not as good as peanut butter, but I'm not going to use peanut butter for any of this test because it has additional fatty acids in it. And it can mess around with the, the results. We want to get pure, clear data. But anyway, catch you tomorrow.